What's up guys, Kevin here. I'm here to talk about the Jound Reebok Club C 85s. Essentially a TLDR would be Jound Reebok Club C. Just a white sneaker. But if you have the opportunity to own it, it'll soon become your favorite sneaker in your rotation. So before I get into, I guess, the discussion of the shoe, let's talk about some specifics of it. So the retail was 150 and it released twice. It released at a Montreal pop-up, which was essentially just like a pre-order, just like the Vans did where they had an in-store pop-up and then they had like an online shipment fulfillment type of thing. The pop-up was only at the early May, if I remember correctly, or maybe even the month prior towards the end of that month. And then the official drop was May 16. I went true to size. I'm a true to size eight, but uh, the, the Club C does stretch with the leather upper. So I have two pairs. I have a dead stock pair and I have a pair that I've been mercilessly beating. Um, the mercilessly beat one fits like an eight and a half, even after cleaning. Uh, the dead stock one fits like an eight. So you can potentially go down half a size Totally up to you guys, but make sure to note that the insole is non-removable. So in the case that you do feel a little bit tight going half a size down, I say just put an insole in it and then see, <laughs> that sounds fucking weird, put an insole in it. I like put a shoe tree in it and then see how it stretches out essentially. They come in a simple plain white box uh, that has jound um, written on the top of it. It's a slide out box. It comes with white laces that are already laced up in it, as well as an ikru color uh, lace that's more of like a cream that matches the tongue of the sneaker. And then the tongue of the sneaker is a ikru, so it's gonna be um, like beige type of color, while the upper consists of a very plush white leather. It has a tan slash beige stripe near the heel as well as a foam midsole. The bottom of the sole is gonna be grayed out, just normal Reebok uh, type of stuff. Um, the upper, or I guess I should say the inner lining is gonna be a terry cloth material. Um, very, very soft, very, very plush. So the foam midsole is quite comfortable for long wears. Like, you know, I would have eight or nine hour shifts when I'll just be standing up all the time. Um, but it also has like harder TPU areas that keep it stabilized. So now that all the technical details are out of the way, let's get into the shoe itself. So with the sneaker market, it's extremely oversaturated. Nike is releasing like 10 shoes a week. Kanye is like releasing six Yeezys a month. So there is quite an oversaturation in the sneaker footwear type of industry. And I think what Justin does very well is that it's almost like being a very like quiet punk, if that sort of makes sense. It's more of, um, it's odd when the mainstream is like for like crazy sneakers, crazy colors, that if you come out with a brand that's like very quiet, very subdued, in a way it is punk because you're going against the mainstream. So if somebody's releasing, you know, fucking 300 shoes a year you might only release two or three if somebody's making designs out of like you know futuristic designs you'll be looking back in the archives to see where you would get it from so there's that type of differentiation between jound and like justin its director the contradiction of one of the quietest brands gaining popularity through its subtlety and anonymity never stops to astonish me it's 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 crazy where like where you would build up like a slow following and jound isn't really even like a brand it's um i mean like jound isn't even like a clothing brand it's very much a lifestyle brand they have like hoodies clothes yes for sure but they have like such weird things like trestles they have fucking um dryer balls they have coffee beans so it's such an expansive type of thing that like the jound aesthetic is very much sort of like a mood or like an aesthetic. Unlike previous collaborations, one, it doesn't have like a crazy or an in-depth story behind it like the Vans did. The Vans, they did research on like what are the most um, coveted Vans that haven't been re-released, you know, from the Made in USA or the Made in California days. What colorways haven't really gotten attention that like people who have been following Vans for a long time would appreciate, as well as Justin trying to make it last longer with like one, the organic um, 
the organic cotton on the upper, as well as organic laces, as well as the boat shoe bottom and the cork insole, or the New Balances, where the New Balance collab has been in the work for a long time and then they were only able to get a small production out and now those are pretty much unicorns. But I think what Justin aimed to do with the Reebok Club C is to just make an everyday sneaker. And I think he's accomplished that. With its simple design, it's pretty much wearable with almost anything, virtually anything. I would wear it with my P10s, which is a more tech wear type of look, very streamlined, very clean cut. I was also wear it with crop pants, as well as like dress pants, as well as shorts. So it's a very versatile everyday sneaker where it still doesn't compromise the quality or the comfort for the simple design. Cough, cough. Common Projects is pretty damn uncomfortable for the first like fucking 50 wears. And the leather just feels so supple and like broken in straight out the gate. Just like how Kanye is inspired by the futuristic designs and like the aesthetic of Akira, Justin is inspired by the archives as well as just timeless design that will, I mean, for lack of a better word, stand the test of time. Like the Reebok Club C, that has been around since 1985. And even the design of the Club C, it pretty much predates um, the Club C itself. Reebok released a um, workout shoe called the Revenge Plus, if I remember correctly, which was essentially the Club C before the Club C. It was just rebranded into the Club C. So it is very much a timeless, simple design. And it's just crazy seeing how many people still wear the Club C after all these years, just like the Jordan 1. So not everything is amazing about the Reebok Club C. Um, this shoe, I thought it was gonna last quite a few years. I do have some durability issues. So the durability issues would potentially be attributed to the, I would say, the leather itself just being very supple and being prone to scuffs. I already have quite a few scuffs on mine, as well as the sole. The sole, I'm a little bit weary whether or not the sole is gonna last a few years, mainly because I'm already getting like some chipping and some partial like breakage of the sole after just maybe two and a half months of like relatively vigorous wear, but like not like crazy. I wear other shoes as well. So it's like, it's very, um, I don't know. It's quite comfortable, but I'm worried that that comfort is trading off with the durability of it. And another con that isn't directly connected to the design of the sneaker would be the resale. So the resale prices range anywhere between 250 to 500 plus for brand new pairs. And I'd say you really have to make a cost analysis whether or not you personally think that it's worth that much. So I I don't know. It would it, it is at the end of the day just a club seat. I'm going to reiterate that. There isn't any crazy material flip there isn't any crazy redesign. So it isn't like the Union ones or the Off-White Jordan ones. There isn't anything super um, intricate or detailed like that happening. But it's a very nice white sneaker, but you can, you can end up replicating pretty much the exact same look using the normal Reebok Club C. There are just gonna be a few minor details that are changed. But if you're gonna need to pay exorbitant amounts for the Club C, I'd say hold off. Would I recommend the sneaker? For 150, hell yeah. For resale, that's where you gotta make the decision, whether or not you think you'll get enough wear or if you think it's a good investment, totally up to you. You guys do with your money however you please. But I'd say really take a look at, well, first off this video, as well as how much you think you're gonna be wearing it, as well as you think this product is something that you really wanna put your money towards. This is an amazing sneaker throughout everything that i've said about it good or bad it's a very clean sneaker very wearable i can wear it with almost anything um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching please comment down below what do you guys think about the reebok club c do you guys think it's overpriced do you think it's justified the cost or do you think it's just a bunch of bullshit? Same with Jound in itself. Do you think it's something that you wanna stand behind or do you think it's just another brand that's very um, full of itself in a way where I've heard that before? It's, it's definitely possible. I'd like to believe in another way, but you know, still could just be full of himself. I don't know. So let's see how this goes. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys soon. And yeah, see ya.